Welcome to the February Roundup and Empties. I was hesitating a little bit if I wanted to do it because I don't think there's that much to talk about, not in terms of like new things and favorites and also not in terms of like empties. But then I thought maybe this is a challenge for me. What if I try to make one of these videos not longer than 20 minutes because all of my Roundup and Empties are always in the ballpark of at least half an hour and I always start thinking I don't have that much to talk about so we will be rather quick. So today's challenge 20 minutes or less. Challenge accepted. Let's get started. So the first category as usual is going to be sort of like beauty adjacent but not necessarily makeup. So starting off with a couple of jewelry pieces that I wanted to mention and the first ones are actually also the ones that I'm wearing on my ears right now. They're like a new style of jewelry that I have started to really enjoy. I ordered these and a ring from this uh, Greek Etsy web shop that I have talked about before that make the most beautiful ear climbers. And then I noticed that they have this style of earrings which are I believe called ear jackets. So you have the little like pearly thing on the like front of your ear lobe and the rest of the ear earring actually goes behind. And I was super in love with these already for a really long time. So I bought these together with a ring. Unfortunately I bought the ring in the wrong size so I passed it along to a friend. But one of my friends from work unbeknownst to my new love of ear jacket earrings actually gave me this beautiful pair of earrings for my birthday which are coincidentally also from another uh, Greek web shop. If I don't forget I will uh, leave a link to both of the shops in the, my description box below if you're interested to check them out but these are also like the same style like these ear jacket type of earrings so the uh, little teal part goes on the front of your earlobe and the little um like circular part goes on the uh, back of your earlobe and they are just absolutely beautiful. I've been thinking about possibly like mixing and matching like putting the little teal part together with this uh, part and then the pearl with the uh, little circular thing so I think these are a lot of fun and you can have a lot of fun experimenting with like mixing and matching but I think it's just a very interesting uh, new style of earrings that I have really been enjoying so I figured I could mention them to you. Before we jump into the makeup there is one additional category that I have like sporadically talked about in my previous Roundup and Empties videos and that is uh, gel nails. I've mentioned a couple of times that since last summer I've been absolutely crazy about uh, gel nail polish and I have like acquired quite a few different colors over the you know past couple of months. One color that I never thought I would enjoy wearing on my actual nails or using for any sort of purpose was like plain paint white. And then um, a couple of months ago I was trying to like replicate some artsy stuff that I saw on Instagram and I just could not get the um, result to look like the video not only because I have two left hands when it comes to like gel nails as of yet I'm still learning I'm still still very much an amateur but mostly because the color that I currently have in like that uh, whitish color family is more of like a cream it's not as opaque and it just wasn't doing it so then I went to Pink Jellac, which is the brand that I have uh, been enjoying the most and uh, that I have everything from actually and I purchased this color and this is Cocoa White and Cocoa White is literally like that stark paint white that you will see on like a hospital wall or something. It is incredibly pigmented, it is very opaque already in one layer and I purchased it with the idea that I'm going to mostly use it for artsy stuff but then I thought what if I tried it on my nails? Like I think white nail polish could be interesting on the nails and then I tried it on my nails as well and I was surprised at how classy AF it looked and how much I enjoyed wearing just like a pure white nail. So I wanted to mention this color because I think it is outstanding uh, and it has been one of my like most used nail polishes since I bought it. I always change up the whole like color story of my nails. It's either blue or teal blue or green or red or whatever but one constant companion to me has become cocoa white because I just use it a lot as a base over the top of which I do artsy stuff or I use it in my artsy you know little projects or I just use it all over my nails because it's beautiful and I just wanted to mention it because it is a fantastic nail polish. All right let's get into the makeup. I'm going to mention a couple of like brand new products that I don't really have any like 
new information to share with you besides the fact that I just purchased them and I just mentioned them in uh, my previous video where I was doing a pet pairing and I demoed a lot of the products. So the first one is this uh, Too Faced Fluff and Hold Laminating Brow Wax which so far what I can say is that I think it does the job really well. It does laminate your brows, it does hold them up for quite a good amount of hours and especially if you have brows like mine which are like thick and coarse and they just do whatever they want, basically only a miracle can hold them for longer than six hours and this does the job actually pretty well. I have to say, would I spend the 20 something euros that this costs again when this is finished? That I don't know. I'm just very like stingy when it comes to certain types of makeup products, brow products being one of them because I just don't, I can't be bothered with my brows, I just don't care. I like them to look a little bit more laminated but other than that I just cannot be bothered and I cannot be bothered mostly because I have enough brows, I don't really have to do much with them. So I've been enjoying this product but only time will tell whether I grow so attached to it that I feel the need to spend those 20 something euros again once this is finished. Also let's see how long it will take me to finish this because usually brow products take me a ridiculously long amount of time to finish. So I really enjoy this. I picked up two under eye concealer type products on recommendation of Martina, Martina Lily here on YouTube and I just realized I'm so dumb I forgot to link her channel in my previous video where I talked about the products so mental note to myself to just not forget to link her channel in the description box below in case you're not familiar with her. First off I bought this a color corrector from Charlotte Tilbury in the shade Light which uh, so far can't really say much besides if you have any sort of like blue purple colors going on under your eyes this does a pretty decent job at covering them up uh, and it is also not very drying on the uh, skin of the under eyes especially if you're someone like me who suffers from extremely dry skin under your eyes but other than that I don't really have much more of an opinion so I'm just mentioning that I purchased this same goes for this uh, Huda Beauty Faux Feudal filter concealer. I bought mine in the shade Meringue which is clearly the wrong shade. I just did a really poor job at shade matching myself. For whatever reason I thought that Martina and I use very like similar shades but I think she's quite much lighter than I am so this turned out to be way too light for me. I think a shade up or even two shades up would probably have been a much better match for me but unfortunately um, I bought this. Again, don't have much of an opinion about it. I'm wearing it today over my uh, Glow Lust by Auric because I wanted to see how this um, performs over top of that. And I feel like it performs pretty similarly over any sort of base. Now, what I will say though is that to me the formula of this concealer is extremely reminiscent of the formula of the Lancome Tainted Doll Concealer. Is this a um, soft focus demi matte finish with a little bit of a blurring property to it. It wears really well throughout the day. That I can tell because I uh, wore it all throughout my work day yesterday and at the end of the day I was actually pretty happy with how my under eyes looked. I think at the very beginning of the day a lot of base products tend to look a little bit um, drier on my skin but then as my natural oils start to break through everything starts to look healthy, luminous and just much nicer and I feel that is what happened yesterday also with the faux filter concealer. I actually really liked how this looked in the end of the day. As I mentioned, too light, I have to mix these two shades in order to get a shade that works for me but um, yeah, I don't really mind doing that so much. So I will come back and tell you what I feel about this concealer in one of my next monthly roundup and uh, empties videos because right now I don't have a solid opinion on it only that it doesn't shrivel the skin under my eyes which is an effect that concealers have instantly. They either shrivel my under eyes or they do not and this one does not which is excellent news. In my video where I uh, demoed the concealer, the brow wax and the corrector I in passing uh, mentioned that I had purchased a couple of lip liners from Lisa Eldridge. These are nothing new, they're nothing exciting, a lip liner is a lip liner. This is another category where I was being really really stingy and I've never really spent more than like one euro on a lip liner and for years and years I used Essence and Catrice lip liners, I was pretty happy with them. Great pigmentation, um, smooth gliding on the lips. However, I realized uh, that 
uh, luckily in, I'm in, in a position now where I can afford to buy Lisa Eldridge lip liners and I'm also someone who heavily relies on lip liners every single day that I do my makeup because I need to outline my lips since they naturally don't have a very distinct line unfortunately and I also rely on lip liners to keep creamy lipsticks within the confinement of my lip lines uh, which I have to say the Essence at Catrice uh, lip liners were not great at doing. So I really wanted something that is a little bit more smudge proof and these truly are smudge proof. So I got the shades for now. I've ordered another batch. This is Decade. Let's give them like a quick little swatch even, even though they are almost the exact shades uh, as the lipsticks. So this is a beautiful dark chocolate brown. As you can see it um, it applied very smoothly. I also purchased the shade Sorcery because I figured it would be really nice to use this shade together with Sorcery the lipstick and also Affair because it works really well for Affair as well. A color that will definitely be very handy in my collection because I didn't actually have a good matching lip liner for that is the shade Cinnabar. Cinnabar is a gorgeous like browny orangey red shade. Nothing new there. And last but not least, of course, I had to go on and purchase the shade Ribbon because I love wearing red lipstick and I can use this lip liner with a whole lot of red lipsticks that I have in my collection. If you were curious, the new batch of lip liners that I ordered uh, are Muse, which is more in line of what I'm wearing right now, more like a rosewood neutral nude type of uh, shade. I purchased Duchess because I need something for my darker vampire reds and I purchased the lip liner uh, in rain because I wanted to have something that is a little bit more like on the pink leaning side without being a Barbie pink. I've only worn Sorcery once yesterday so I don't really have like a solid opinion on these yet but I really hope that they live up to the hype and to their price because they were very expensive. Now since we are on the Lisa Eldridge topic maybe we can talk about the uh, other two products that I pick up picked up in this past month which were one of her new uh, lip glosses and one of the loosens that is not new but it is new to me. So let's start with the lip gloss. So she released a couple of new shades of her uh, lip gloss embrace and one of those new shades was the shade Decade and if you've been around my channel for any amount of time you will know that the Velvet in Decade is one of my most favorite like brown vampy lipsticks ever. I wear the crap out of Decade during the winter months so when she said she was releasing a, a gloss embrace in that shade I had no doubt that this is coming home with me. And this is a beautiful, beautiful color. Now I will say, because also someone mentioned it when I was demoing this uh, gloss in one of my previous videos, I can link that up here if I don't forget, that this has a little bit of like a purple tinge to it. And that is true. And that is also true for the lipstick. Because the lipstick is more opaque and more pigmented, you see those hints of purple, but mostly just leans uh, to like a neutral like really well balanced dark chocolate brown whereas this is a little bit less opaque so depending on the lighting you're going to catch either a little bit more of those like purple tones or it is going to look actually more brown and what I really love about this gloss is that you can really build it up or sheer it down depending on how you prefer to wear it if you're too scared of it being full opacity thank you son you can absolutely shear it down and wear it as a little bit of a stain. That is the beautiful thing about this gloss, that it does um, stain your lips a little bit at in, and it remains as a stain instead of just completely being wiped off. Obviously it's a gloss, it will come off and especially these ones from Lisa Eldridge, which I consider to be more of a hybrid between lip skincare, lip, lip skincare, lip care and lip gloss. They're like a lip oil slash lip gloss kind of hybrid to me personally. They come off rather easily but they're so comfortable, so hydrating and uh, this color is absolutely stunning and I love having it in my collection. I usually prefer to wear my lip glosses um, separately from the lipstick because I always have the feeling that if I wear the lipstick with the matching lip gloss, the lip gloss sorts of sort of eats up the lipstick in the middle portion of my lips, at least on me. So I personally prefer to just have like an outline of the lip with a lip liner and then the gloss only. So that's how I've been enjoying wearing um, this shade the most. It is stunning. And then the lipstick that I picked up, like I mentioned, is uh, one of her loosens. This is the shade Kitten Mischief. 
we need to do something about this. Okay, this may or may not be better. Now, Kitten Mischief has been on my little wish list, shopping list for a very long time. I was just always afraid that it will be too nude for me. Luckily, it is not. I have a video where I have demoed this. Um, I think it was a pet pairing a couple of weeks ago. I will try to link that up in the cards for you as well. But as you can see, it is a beautiful, sort of like coral tinged peachy pink nude. It is definitely not too light and too nude. And I think I'm going to enjoy this so much during the summer months. And the Lucent formula has always been one of my favorite cream lipsticks because, again, extremely comfortable, very flattering, and it wears down like a stain, including this lipstick. When you wear it throughout the day, the glossy, sheeny part wears off, but the actual color remains as a stain on your lips, and that's just something I so appreciate about a lot of Lisa Eldridge's lip products. I do have a couple of older uh, makeup favorites that I have currently been enjoying in the past month, but I do want to mention one which is te technically new, but I have owned it already for over a year, and that is my Inglot eyeshadow base. I mentioned, I've mentioned this in quite a few videos, so I don't want to spend too much time on it, but I was looking for alternatives to my favorite MAC 24 Extend eye base, because as of late I've had the feeling that I can't really rely on that eyeshadow base for my eyeshadows not to crease within an undefined amount of time. I've just, it has just been working very inconsistently for me lately and I don't know why. And it is too expensive to work inconsistently. So I purchased this Inglot primer and the eyeshadow base from Urban Decay, the primer potion, last year. It took another year for me to actually completely finish up my MAC base. But now that I have and I've started using this one, I love this. It is the most affordable out of the three. I love the packaging because it has this beautiful, like, thin little nozzle and the product itself is quite... I, I, I think it's, like, quite creamy. You can um, blend it out easily. It doesn't dry out your eyelids. It's not too oily. It is just the perfect eyeshadow base and it is reliable. We like reliable in this house. Um, my eyeshadows just never budge anymore. I put them on in the morning and when I'm wiping off my makeup there isn't even a single crease. So I love this. This is definitely my new favorite eyeshadow primer. How on earth did we make it so far into the video and not mention Pat McGrath once? Let me rectify that. So the first product I want to mention and I did talk about this also in my previous monthly roundup and empties but I've continued to be obsessed with it in every single aspect. It's, this lipstick is a piece of art. I love looking at it, I love staring at it, and I love wearing it. This is the shade Rouge 8, which was released as a part of her Lunar New Year collection for this year, together with the Voristic Vixen Quad in the new red packaging. I will never get tired of showing you this lipstick. It is in her matte trans formula. It has this beautiful little design on the bullet. And it is just such a stunning shade of red. I have a very like soft spot for red lipsticks. It takes a lot for me not to like a red lipstick, but I just really love this one. It has such beautiful, unique tones to it. And I believe it's still on the website. I don't think this is sold out. Another product that I talked about recently again but i cannot fail to mention it um comes with like a whole category of looks that i've been enjoying wearing lately i don't have specific like eyeshadow palettes to show you for this past month there hasn't really been one that stands out in my mind but there is like a specific type of look that i've really been enjoying wearing lately and that is more neutral like toned down brown eyeshadow looks so think of um the natasha denona face and eye glam palette in the dark version think of the chocolate brown from utopian dream think of my guerlain royal jungle quad that beautiful brown shade that i always um, rave about and another eyeshadow that i have just truly been enjoying wearing so much is ultra suede brown that comes with one of the kits that was originally released when pat uh, had first launched the labs and it is just such an incredibly beautiful flattering shade of bronzy brown with a hint of gold and a hint of like green tinge in the base color and i know i've talked about this eyeshadow before but i don't want to shut up about it because i've just been wearing it so often lately um either on its own well actually on its own not as much as paired with specifically the uh, mothership 5 palette because the 
astro shade in that palette just looks very beautiful when you just lightly dab it over top of a little bit of this eyeshadow without taking too much away from this eyeshadow. It's just been one of my favorite like neutral looks to wear lately. And last but not least I have two base products to talk about before we move into the empties. The first one is the Pat McGrath Skin Fetish Sublime Perfection Foundation. I've had this foundation for the longest time. Again, did a poor job at shade matching myself. Bought a shade that is a little bit too light for me to wear throughout most of the year. This is the shade Light 5. But since I'm quite pale now, I feel like I can pull this shade off pretty well. So, um, I am already down to here with this foundation, so I have only like this bit left. And what can I say about this foundation that is not going to be confusing? This is a really lovely foundation. It is a lovely um, uh, light to medium coverage. Medium coverage is maybe a little bit of a questionable term depending on what you consider to be medium coverage. To me this is a light to medium coverage which looks very natural. It is a very thin consistency um, so it doesn't like really sit foundation-y on the skin and it looks good. Like I look at myself in the viewfinder now and I think this looks great. It wears really well throughout the day but for whatever reason, not when I purchased it and not now, did I ever have the feeling that I'm in love with this foundation? It just never stood out. And especially because it is so expensive. This is the most expensive foundation that I've ever purchased. And the thing is, I wear foundations with this formula a lot. So this is my preferred formula of foundation. So I've tried quite a few different formulas from Estee Lauder, from Dior, from MAC, um, from Chanel recently with the Complexion Touch. And because they're all in a similar, like, mid-luxury price range and they're beautiful formulas that I still really really enjoy just as much as this one. Something has always prevented me from loving this foundation and that remains the case uh, four years later after I purchased it. So I really want to finish this foundation up. I'm really hoping that with the relatively fast progress that I have made from here to here in just a month I can probably try to finish this by the beginning of spring summer when I need to switch my uh, foundation shade to something a little bit deeper and just say goodbye to this foundation and for, and for now I have no plans of repurchasing it. It is a really good foundation I just don't think it stands out compared to similar um, less expensive formulas on the market. Something that is again a little bit of a throwback because I've had this product for a really long time but it works really well with the Pat McGrath foundation is this Dior Backstage Powder No Powder. This is an older release. This is one of those baked gelée, slightly glowy, very natural looking on the skin, not really blurring, not really going to prevent your oils from coming through type of formula, but it just makes your skin look really healthy. And I've loved how it looks together with the Pat McGrath foundation, so obviously I've been wearing both of these quite a bit lately. And I am really happy to be back to this powder because I had kind of pushed it a bit to the side. I had uh, gotten distracted again by other powders, but this reminded me how much I love this powder. And another thing this powder reminded me of is not to be purchasing more powders in similar formulas. When I was uh, on Cult Beauty purchasing the Charlotte Tilbury Corrector, the Too Faced Brow Wax thing and the Huda Concealer, I was eyeballing also by on a recommendation from Martina Lili de Cosa's Cloud Something Powder. But then, right before I was about to purchase, I thought, wait, let me go and check the ingredients of this powder compared to something like the Dior Backstage powder because they sound like they have a similar effect on the skin. And from what I could tell, the formulas are quite similar. They're not the same, but they're very comparable to each other. So I figured, why am I purchasing yet another powder that does the exact same job as this when I can just focus on finishing this first? So I did a really good job at stopping myself there and I'm really proud of myself for that. Good job. And just to demonstrate the smudge proof quality of the Lisa Eldridge lip liners, I uh, used a little makeup wipe to remove everything else here in terms of swatches and you can tell nothing came off in terms of the uh, lip liners. I have finished only a handful of products so I'm going to start with the um, one skincare product that I finished and that is the Paula's Choice Discoloration Repair Serum with tranexamic, tranexamic Acid and Bakuchi Oil. I purchased this right after it was released. This is a relatively new product to Paula's Choice line because I've been struggling a little bit with hyperpigmentation appearing on my skin, especially in the summer months and especially one particular spot that just sprouted overnight two years ago here on my forehead. 
I don't think you can even see that uh, little spot right now. One, because it's winter and two, because I've been doing a really good job at like attacking that thing with all sorts of, you know, anti-hyperpigmentation products, this being one of them. Um, I did not repurchase this yet because as you can see there's really nothing to be combating right now. I think once the summer months hit and this guy comes back to life I might have to go and repurchase this but I can't really tell you how much this did on its own. So I would not go out and recommend it as a discoloration serum if you're struggling with hyperpigmentation as like a standalone product because I've never tested it in that context but when I use it together with you know, my other arsenal of um, anti-hyperpigmentation products. It did the job really well and only time shall tell if I truly miss this from my skincare routine once the summer months hit and I have to once again stand up against this guy here. Okay, two makeup products that I finished. One is like a really, really old thing that I dug out from the depths of my makeup drawers a while back and that is the Becca Backlight Priming Filter which I only had like a little mini of. Essentially this does the same thing as the Strobe Cream by MAC or the Glow Lust by uh, Auric and I basically tried to use it in the same way. I used it underneath my eyes to illuminate and hydrate. There's a tiny bit of product left in here but I really can't be bothered and I mostly just wanted to not be wasteful and use up most of it before I toss it which now I can do because I have used about 95% uh, of it. And last but not least a product that I'm not going to spend too much time talking about. It is a holy grail. You see it every few months reappearing in my empties because it is the only mascara that I ever go back to and that is the Kiko Extra Sculpt Mascara. The best mascara for my lashes. Makes them black, thickens them, provides them with, um, you know, definition, holds a curl, love, love and love. Also very inexpensive. But when mascara is one of those things that is so incredibly personal that if it works for me it doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to work for you. But on the other hand it's not very expensive so if it doesn't end up working for you at least you didn't spend a ton of money on it. So I highly recommend this mascara if you have the opportunity to purchase Kiko around you. Again another category that I feel relatively stingy about because I've never had the experience that something high-end did a better job than the uh, drugstore tier of makeup. So with that we're going to conclude this uh, February roundup and empties. I hope that you enjoyed it. I've been filming for 35 minutes so the challenge of making this video uh, 20 minutes or under is starting to look quite unlikely. What should be my punishment? You let me know in the comments. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in my next video. Bye!